just like any industry, they've got one thing in mind, and that's to sell as much of their product as possible to the consumer, inconsequential of the, of the health problems associated with it. The health problems are severe, like obesity, type 1 diabetes, other autoimmune diseases, severe constipation, all kinds of food allergy problems, uh, heart disease, elevated cholesterol, I mean, you name it. And a dairy product a diet is likely at the root of the problem. Babies need mother's milk. Breastfeeding is something that was totally out of fashion when I was a kid, but it, it really should be front and center in every pediatrician's set of recommendations. After the age of weaning, there's no requirement for any kind of milk, and certainly not the milk of another species. The purpose of cow's milk is to turn a 65 pound calf into a 400 pound cow as rapidly as possible. Cow's milk is baby calf growth fluid. That's what this stuff is. Cow's milk is the lactation secretions of a large bovine mammal who just had a baby. It's for baby calves. Don't be eating baby calf growth fluid in, in any level. There's nothing in it people need. The number one source of calcium in the American diet is dairy products, but the number one source of artery-clogging saturated fat is also dairy products. One of the top allergens in the U.S. food supply as well. So while cow's milk represents a substantial source of calcium, it comes with a lot of baggage. For decades, the dairy industry and U.S. government have been saying that milk is good for our bones. While all whole foods contain calcium, an essential nutrient for bone health, it is argued that we need the higher amounts found in dairy. The higher the dairy consumption, the higher the rate of osteoporosis, exactly the opposite of what the dairy industry has been telling us for so long. And so when you consume estrogen in dairy products, this contributes to higher estrogen levels. And so some of the mischief that happens in the body when women consume estrogen in dairy products and have high estrogen levels for other reasons too, is uh, most breast cancers are estrogen receptor positive, ovarian cancer, estrogen uh, fed, uterine fibroids, um, menstrual distress, premenstrual syndrome, uh, infertility. These are all conditions that are at least in part related to high estrogen levels. So uh, dairy products are quite harmful to women for that reason. There are also multiple studies that have been done on various populations of people that show when you feed high fat diets to these people, what happens is their hormones change. For example, insulin-like growth factor one changes. <clears throat> insulin-like growth factor one is a, a growth stimulant, and uh, that is raised by consuming dairy and meat and other high-protein foods. And that growth hormone stimulates pimple development.
A third part of this is what is what are called casomorphins. Casein protein, C-A-S-E-I-N, casein protein in milk is concentrated in cheese and in your body when it's digested, it releases small molecules called casomorphins, casein derived morphine like compounds. When I say morphine like, they are opiates that go to the brain and they attach to the very same brain receptors that morphine or heroin or other narcotics attach to. They are mild narcotics. The kind of bonus you get with dairy is the saturated butter fat and lactose and cholesterol and antibiotics, pesticides, pus and manure. Well, the United States has the highest allowable pus cell concentration in the world, can allow 300 million pus cells per tall frosty glass.